mangoes are picked in one of three ways. The first is with a harvest aid. This is where a team of people pick mangoes and place or gently throw them onto a tarpaulin, either with the stems on or off. There are different types of these machines and you may either pick from the ground or from a platform. Fruit are either snap picked or picked with secateurs or picking sticks. When snap picking, the fruit is grasped at the bottom and then the bottom of the fruit is lifted up, snapping the stem of the fruit before it is put onto the harvest aid. Sap may spurt from the mango when it is picked this way and it is important that the sap doesn't contact the mango skin, your skin or the skin of other pickers. To neutralise the sap, a chemical commonly called mango wash is sprayed onto the tarpaulin and over the conveyor that collects the fruit. If the stems are removed, it is important that the fruit is placed onto the tarpaulin within five seconds, otherwise the sap will burn the skin. If the stem is still on the fruit, the fruit must be destemmed either under a spray or in a bath of mango wash. The fruit must be left under the spray or in the bath for one minute to protect the fruit from sap burn. If you get sap on your hands, it is important that you wash this sap from your hands before you touch any other mango fruit, as even a small amount of sap can damage the fruit. A picking stick is used to pick mangoes you can't reach from the ground. It has a set of cutting blades to cut the stem and a set of jaws to hold the stem when it is cut. The jaws of the picking stick must be facing down so the fruit isn't dropped after it is picked. Once on the harvest aid, the fruit flows from the spray or bath along a conveyor and drops into a bulk bin for transport to the packing shed. It is good practice for the fruit to fall onto a foam pad when it falls into the bulk bin and this pad must be repositioned as the fruit fills the bin. The second way mangoes are picked is with a hydraulic ladder called a cherry picker. A cherry picker is operated by a single person and moves up and down and inside and around the tree. The fruit is snapped from the tree and placed into a picking bag. Mango wash is sprayed over the fruit to neutralise the sap. When the picking bag is full, it is lowered to the ground and emptied gently into a bulk bin for transport to the packing shed. It is important that all fruit in the bag is covered by mango wash, so do not overfill the bag before emptying. The third way to pick mangoes is to pick with the stems intact and the fruit is desapped in the packing shed. Using secateurs or picking sticks, fruit is picked with a 10 to 20 centimetre stem attached and placed into crates and transported to the packing shed. Care must be taken when placing the fruit in the crate and during handling and transport so the mango stems aren't broken and mango sap does not come into contact with the skin. These crates are stacked for transport or short term storage in the packing shed so it is important that they are not overfilled and fruit damaged or stems broken when they are stacked. If the mangoes have been picked with the stems on, these stems need to be removed and the mangoes desapped before packing. This can be done either through snapping the stems or using a machine which cuts the stem from the fruit. During this process, it is important that the mango fruit are completely covered in a detergent solution before the stem is removed, so the sap does not come into contact with the skin and damage it. As well as damage from sap burn, mango quality can be lost through physical injury from incorrect picking technique and rough handling. Damage from sap burn or physical injury takes one to two days to appear and isn't usually seen until fruit reaches market. It takes four to six weeks for them to come back and repurchase that product. It's therefore important that both the visual and eating qualities of a mango match consumer expectations. So why is this important for mango pickers? Even the simple task of picking a mango fruit can have a significant impact on the visual and eating qualities of a fruit and therefore the profitability of the grower. The aim of this video is to teach you how to pick mango fruit correctly and learn the skills required. You'll learn how to select fruit that is mature and ready to harvest. You'll learn how to use the different equipment you'll be using during the picking process. You'll understand how poor picking processes can significantly damage mango fruit. And you'll understand how to pick without injuring yourself or other pickers. There are names for the different parts of the mango. The stem end is the top of the mango, that's where it's attached to the tree. The cheek is the side of the mango, that's the part you eat. The blush is the red, pink or orange colour on the cheek. The nose is the bottom part of the mango. You may hear terms like soft nose used when fruit has a defect. And the beak is the pointed part near the nose. Mangoes are picked in a hard green mature state 
so they will ripen to an acceptable eating quality and external appearance. At this stage the fruit is hard and the skin is green apart from the blush. The shape of a mango fruit changes as the fruit matures. The mature fruit on the left is more rounded and oval shaped as opposed to the egg shaped immature fruit on the right. As the fruit matures, the nose end of the fruit fills out and is smoother and the beak is less obvious. From left to right on this slide, the fruit goes from immature to mature. The beak of the fruit is much more prominent in the immature fruit on the left than the mature fruit on the right. When these fruit are ripened, the immature fruit stays green, while the more mature fruit will change colour to yellow. The shoulder of the fruit also fills out around the stem, and the stem sits in a small depression when the fruit matures. It is important to only pick mature fruit, as fruit maturity can have a significant impact on eating quality of mangoes. You need to be particularly careful with the first sap that comes from the mangoes when you pick it. This is called spurt sap. If spurt sap comes in contact with the skin of the mango, it can damage the skin. This is called sap burn. This sap can also burn your skin or skin of other pickers. Sap can continue to ooze from the fruit for several hours, and although this sap isn't as damaging as spurt sap, it can still cause skin browning and reduce the sale price of mangoes. The types of physical injury include abrasion, cuts and scratches, stem punctures, crease marks, wounds and internal bruising. Abrasion shows as brown marks on the skin, often with scratches through the mark. It is caused by the skin of the fruit rubbing against dirty, dusty equipment or crates and bulk bins, or sticks and leaves in the crates and bins. Cuts and scratches occur when the sharp edge of a picking stick or secateurs knock the fruit, or when the fruit scrapes against a twig or a branch as it is pulled from the tree. Stem punctures occur when the stem is not completely removed and the short stem punctures another fruit as it is placed onto the harvest aid as it rolls into the bulk bin or through pressure from other fruit in the bulk bin. Crease marks occur when the fruit impacts heavily against the edge of equipment, crates or bins, or when the blunt parts of a picking stick knock the fruit. Wounds occur when the fruit contacts a sharp edge and the skin of the fruit is pierced. Monitoring of picking crews has shown the effect poor picking practices and rough handling has on physical damage on fruit. At one orchard, fruit was assessed for physical damage on arrival at the packing shed. Damage to the fruit from different picking teams range from 2% to 17%. So for the worst team, 17% of the fruit had already been downgraded when it reached the shed, resulting in significant losses to the grower. Mangoes are picked during the hottest part of the year. The work is hard and constant and temperatures in the orchard often reach above 35 degrees Celsius. There is little shade in the orchard so it is very important that you follow a few precautions when you are picking. Wear the right clothes to protect you from the sun. Lightweight long sleeve shirts and long trousers are recommended. Wear a wide brimmed hat and good shoes. Eye protection in the form of sunglasses is also recommended. Apply sunscreen before you start picking each day and at least every two hours during the day. Drink water regularly during the day and at least four litres each day. When you are snapping the fruit from the tree, Make sure the sap doesn't spurt onto you or other pickers. Some people are highly sensitive to mango sap and can develop a severe rash from contact with the sap. If you are spurted with mango sap, it is important that you wash the area with soap and water and then rinse it well with fresh water. As a picker, it is important that you understand how mango quality can be lost and why it is important you follow the simple steps outlined in this video to reduce quality loss. Some do's and don'ts when picking mangoes. The do's. Do understand fruit maturity and only pick mature fruit. Be gentle with the fruit. Make sure mangoes are in the mango wash within five seconds of being picked. Wash the mango sap from your hands or skin. Wear the right clothes and drink lots of water when you're picking mangoes. And be careful around heavy equipment. The don'ts. Don't pick immature fruit. Don't hit fruit with picking equipment. Don't handle fruit roughly or throw it against the hard edges of harvest aids, bins or crates. Don't let mango sap come into contact with mango skin and don't let mango sap come into contact with your skin, your eyes or the skin of other pickers. As you can see, picking mangoes is more difficult than it seems. And now you can understand why you have been instructed to pick the fruit the way you have. Everybody has a role in optimising mango fruit quality.